All right, so to Chris Fagan shortly. The developing story of the weekend surrounded Christian Petrarca and Melbourne. This took a few twists along the way. It took its most dramatic turn as it resolved on Saturday night, Christian Petrarca recommitting himself with the Ds. I want to put that one to bed a little bit. Communication's been really strong internally around Christian. I've had conversations, open conversations with Christian regularly, and I think um, people seem to pass all frustrations and tension up as a negative. It's, it's actually a positive. Do you think if he wasn't under a long-term contract, he would seek to leave you in the off-season? Oh, I, I have no idea. All I can say is this, Tom, that he's got five years to go on the contract. We love him. We know that it's been a challenging period. He's got five years. He's, he's red and blue. He's going to make us better. He'll be with us. Christian's going to be at this footy club, you know, for the next five years. He's got five years to go on his contract and he's going to be part of the red and blue. That's the plan that we've all got, is to be fully connected and together as one and Christian will be at the footy club for the next five years. Oh, no, we're not going to trade Christian. We acknowledge that it's been a really tough time for him, but our footy club's been built around some really important signings. Christian's one of them. Will you keep him? Oh, most definitely. So he's not looking to go? He's contracted for five years, Mick, he's with us. Well, yeah, but is he looking to go? No, he's not looking to go. He's staying with us. My gut feel is September's still going to be a pretty busy month for us, where there's a lot of noise around our club. So I'm going to make sure we get things going and we get a really good start to our off-season. I'm going to have some good conversations over the next week or two and make sure we grow as a club. But Christian's got a contract and he's going to be there for five years, so um, that's the space that we'll live in. I can only tell you what to come down to Melbourne. They are absolutely resolute that Christian won't be traded under any circumstances. Unbelievably traumatic experience for him. So it's not a standoff, certainly not from our point of view. We're sitting there going, we're listening, we're working together, and he's a player at our club that we love. Our program, to a large degree, is... You know, he's pivotal in that, and we're, we're going to have him here and we're going to keep working with him to make sure we get the best track out on the field that we can. But does he have a preference to be elsewhere? I haven't spoken directly to him about that. The question's revol resolved around heels. Heel, hold or deal, heel was always the best possible outcome here. And across the course of Saturday at some stage, it was like there was an epiphany to stop the briefing and to stop the blaming and to get to the questions of how did we get here and how do we resolve? How do we avoid a nasty breakup? Which for a couple of weeks it was headed in that direction. Yeah, well done with Kate Roffey, one of the interviews of the year. I don't think any Melbourne supporter listening to that interview was reassured in any way about the leadership of that football club from board level. They just weren't. And I, I thought maybe she went on there with good intentions, but I think it did more harm than good for a very worried Melbourne cohort. But by Saturday night, um, the good news came out that Christian Petrarca was, had, had recommitted. I mean, there's so many questions still, and which Christian will address one day, I'm sure. Hopefully it was with us, Jared. But I, I think it's dawned on everyone right now that 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 injury and what happened in the weeks after had such a great impact on him that it hasn't that wasn't properly addressed either with Christian with his teammates with the club especially it wasn't properly addressed and it led to this calamitous situation of what we've seen the last two and a half weeks surrounding Christian Petrarca and so what change comes as a result I think is the most interesting watch now at Melbourne um, what level of commitment to change has there been? What did those conversations look like? None of what Petrarca was saying was foreign to Melbourne. And in fact, for all that was being spoken around tensions in the player group, it, it echoed what he and Max Gorn and Jack Viney had believed and communicated for a long time. So have they had the adequate hearing? Is there the commitment to make the changes oh, they, that need to be made? They just what will it look be. like? How rapid no. will it come? Does it happen over the course of a couple of months, this off-season? Does it all stretch out over two years? Is It took... There was an environment around Collingwood where it required total change. Yep. And they got that total change and it reinvigorated and emboldened that yep. team to the success that it had. There will Feels be like change. Melbourne's at that yeah, point. Yeah, there, there will be change. I'll be surprised if, there's, if, if Kate Roffey survives as president, um, if there's not a board challenge, if she, if she stays on. She goes, no, I'm going to stay on. I think suspect there will be 
a board challenge. This can't happen at a football club, Jared, and there'd be no consequences. Now, the internal stuff, that, that'll play out, OK? We'll see... T- They'll talk about that after the event more than what we'll know on the outside. But publicly, we'll, is Gary Pert's position in, in, in jeopardy? These are the questions that Melbourne people will be asking, and so they'll be looking at the club. There's going to be no in, no external review. Gary Pert's doing an internal review. He's not going to find himself, yeah, I've got to go. But there will be people losing their positions. This can't happen, and then everyone say, oh, no, no, we're all back on the same page. Let's all toddle off together into the sunset. No, no. That won't be happening. What annoys me a little bit, what annoys me a little bit, is two years ago we were writing about all this stuff about Melbourne and Melbourne comes saying, no, isolated, nothing wrong here, Gary Pert's favourite, best culture ever. It's all been written about and was shot down. And now we're all saying, well, you know, there's some culture issues. I mean, so come on, they, they've got to get on board earlier than that. They've got to be truthful with themselves and then truthful with their supporters.